guys. Today we are going to do an art project based off of Gustav Klimt. He was known for his highly decorative patterns in the fabrics of some of his paintings. And so we're going to be doing something like this. We're going to do a wax resist piece and uh, we're going to sketch it first and then we're going to go from there. So let's go ahead and take a look. So these are some examples of what you are going to do. It doesn't have to be exactly like the one that I just showed you, which was this one, but it could be three people in a group. It could be a person with their head tilted, all snuggled with quilt pieces around them, like these two. It could be just a person sleeping on a pillow like this one or this one. And you could turn your paper the other direction and do this one. I added this one because they did like a diamond shaped pattern on their uh, quilt and it's a snake and a mouse and I thought that was pretty cool too. Uh, this is how we're going to do it. How to make a person sleeping in a quilt. The quick list is you will need a pencil, sharpie, crayons, and watercolors. Number one, you are going to sketch a face or faces in pencil, and then you're gonna sketch a quilt, but you're not going to do the patterns. You're just gonna sketch out the quilt, okay? Number two, you will trace over all of your pencil with Sharpie marker. Number three, you will use crayons to make patterns. Make sure in this part that the crayon is thick and dark. Okay. The other thing you're going to do is you are going to color in the face and also put a um, pattern in the hair. Number four. Oh, you can barely see that, but it says when the patterns are finished, we will paint over the patterns with watercolors. So the first thing you should do is take a pencil and sketch out your idea. Draw lightly, okay? Here's the center of the face, and so that's where I'm going to do my eyes. I'm gonna draw a sleeping person, and draw a nose and a mouth, okay? I'm going to have this person snuggled up in a quilt, so I'm gonna draw the line right under their chin, but I'm gonna have some quilt pieces up over their head. But you know what? I need to get the hair on first. <laughs> There's my crazy quilt. The second thing then is to outline it in Sharpie once you have it drawn. I turned off the camera and I outlined most of this so you didn't have to watch me and so now I'm just gonna finish up outlining this. Okay, And then the next thing to do would be to let's make one more piece over here. I think that would balance it a little bit more. There we go. Always look at your pieces from far away. I would erase my pencil marks. Always erase your pencil marks so we don't see them. Okay, there, that's most of them. I'll erase them in a little bit. And then you're gonna use your crayons and start making patterns. The best thing to do, guys, is to outline your pieces before you do your pattern. So I'm taking this purple crayon and I am going to outline it. What that does is when I'm painting, it'll keep all the watercolor into the pattern piece. And otherwise, the pattern pieces, they could, uh, they could, uh, because the watercolor is wet, they will blend together. Um, so then you can start making patterns. They can be simple as X's and stripes. You can look at other ideas from books and have or look around you, look at clothing. But these are all fabrics and they're going to have, all of them are gonna be different. Ta-da! 
the magic of video. Yep, it's all done. I've already started painting. And it might look like this one over here. Um, oh, I already started painting it. But I used white crayon. So if you use red, white crayon and you go over it, it won't stick to the white crayon. See how it kind of beads off? And make sure that you're painting with the tip of your brush and that if you want it darker if you want your paint watercolor paints to be darker stir on top of the watercolor paint with lots and lots of water and it will become darker 